that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody killed. Was Jasmine Masters is a queen that has had a lot of interesting moments with her time on RuPaul's Drag Race. And by that I mean she's one of the few queens who've been able to experience both the fan base hating her as well as the fan base loving her. Jasmine has also described herself as one of the best examples when it comes to local queens being represented on Drag Race. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Jasmine Master's journey from getting on Drag Race to where she is now, as well as some interesting things that happened along the way. Let's begin. In early 2015, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7 would begin airing, with the world being blessed by the introduction of Jasmine Masters. When the first episode aired, her entrance was one that stuck out, particularly because of those well-defined abs, with the highlight of the episode being when she decided to walk down the runway in a makeshift butterfly cocoon. On Season 7 Episode 2, Jasmine did a pretty good job in her Glamazonian Airways performance. But the real drama would begin while in the untucked for the episode as she got into an argument with Trixie Mattel, where they both argued about whether or not Trixie's outfit met the criteria for the runway, which was Jet Set Eleganza. The argument was honestly pretty mild, but the reason I bring this up is because Jasmine believes that a big part of the reason why a lot of the fans hated her was due to the fact that she argued with Trixie on the show. No, they was getting mad because they see me go off on Trixie. You think that's what it was? That's what it was. Really? Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Ah! And she's not necessarily all that far off. I mean, the fan base absolutely hated Jasmine Masters with a passion while season seven was airing. The hate would come in many forms, from cyberbullying, with Jasmine being called many racial slurs, as well as receiving many death threats and losing bookings due to fans not wanting to support her shows. Essentially, Jasmine Masters' journey through season seven was filled with a lot of hate from the fans. So much that by the time they filmed the grand finale, RuPaul dedicated a segment to calling out fans of the show and telling them that it's not okay the way they treat some of the queens who've competed. Another reason why the fans didn't like Jasmine was when in Season 7, Episode 3, Jasmine would be part of one of the worst group acting performances from the show which resulted in RuPaul yelling at the queens while on the main stage. I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses anymore. To top it all off, Jasmine didn't fully meet the runway category, which was bearded drag, as Jasmine was the only queen to not put something on her face, with Jasmine pretty much just coloring on a black beard. As for the reason why, it was due to Jasmine having sensitive skin and not wanting to cause any damage by adding glue. Jasmine also points out that she felt RuPaul yelling at the queens was a sign of disrespect. This was also the same episode where Jasmine infamously packed all her bags before it was even time to go on the main stage for the runways, which the fans again criticized her for because at the time, fans didn't really like when queens would just give up on the show, which ironically would have the opposite effect when Adore Delano would end up quitting All Stars 2. Now by the end of season seven, episode three, Jasmine was placed in the bottom two against her best friend, Kennedy Davenport. They would lip sync to I Was Gonna Cancel by Kylie Minogue. Now, watching this, I was actually impressed by Jasmine's lip sync against Kennedy Davenport. The way she was doing those jumping squats while wearing a gown, I mean, say what you want, but this is gay history. She didn't get eliminated, placing 12, although she'd later return midway through the season for the makeover challenge, where she got paired with Kennedy Davenport. However, Pearl and Trixie won the challenge, which meant that Jasmine wouldn't be returning to the competition. Now, before Jasmine was cast on season seven, she began creating YouTube videos which consisted of her discussing random topics and giving us her unfiltered opinion on them something that she'd continue to do both while season seven was airing and well after it ended. The videos she made would create a sort of cult following within the fan base, with only the fans who were obsessed with the show being able to not only find these videos, but appreciate them for the art form that they were. Nevertheless, it wouldn't take long for Jasmine to have her first viral moment, when in the summer of 2016, the most random crossover ever would take place, when Justin Bieber posted on Instagram a video of Jasmine Masters going on her infamous rant of people who have bad breath. 
The post was viewed by the millions of fans that follow Justin Bieber, which made Jasmine an overnight trending topic, allowing the original video to become a huge meme. This was one of the first times that Jasmine was provided with a flood of positivity from not only the fan base, but millions of people who didn't even know who she was. Jasmine said she felt really happy about Justin Bieber's shout out on Instagram, as she then received thousands of new followers across all her social media platforms. All right, so I just wanted to take a moment to discuss one of the most important pieces of Drag Race lore that exists within the fandom. On January 28, 2016, Jasmine would bless the world with a video titled RuPaul's Drag Race Fucked Up Drag, which immediately went viral on social media. RuPaul's Drag Race had fucked up drag. Bottom line couldn't drive. In the video, Jasmine points out that the show has affected the drag scene in the real world, where she calls out local queens who started to show up at bars wearing nothing but bras and panties and thinking they're sickening. Because in Jasmine's opinion, drag is about having a silhouette and being glamorous. But she also feels that a big reason why more queens are dressing this way was due to the show's impact on the drag scene in the real world. Because people were now exposed into knowing that there's different types of ways that people can engage in the art form of drag. Jasmine says that one of her motivations for wanting to get on RuPaul's Drag Race was because she got sick of seeing Ru girls coming to perform at her bars and not putting any effort into their drag or their performances, despite the fact that they were getting paid a lot more than the local queens. Thus, when Jasmine was officially cast on season 7, she saw it as a well-deserved pay raise, along with a wonderful opportunity to experience something very unique and connect with a wider audience. Now, Jasmine has also acknowledged that she comes from the old-school way of drag, so for her, she has a very specific idea of what a drag queen should be. This video, in a way, symbolized how Drag Race had gotten so big that it was changing the way people were seeing drag and opening the doors to newer types of drag within the art form. That being said, after Jasmine posted this video, it initially got a lot of negative backlash from the fans, with many people calling Jasmine an ungrateful queen, a hypocrite, and told not to be biting the hand that feeds her. It was only over the course of years, as Jasmine began to get more popular and more loved, that people began to look back at this video as something iconic. Throughout her career, Jasmine has always expressed her appreciation towards her fans. In early 2016, Jasmine Masters announced that due to the amount of underage fans who were not able to get into the clubs to watch their favorite Drag Race girl perform, she felt inspired to make an all-ages drag show that would tour the United States citing that she felt bad seeing young queer kids not being able to get into the clubs because of their age, and wanted them to be able to experience a drag show at some capacity. As the weeks went by, it seemed like it was actually going to happen, with a bunch of other Drag Race girls agreeing to be a part of the tour, and even making promo pictures for the tour. However, as the months went by, everyone just sort of stopped talking about it, until it became apparent that it was no longer going to be happening. Perhaps the logistics of this project were too much once they really began to look into it, but I remember at the time thinking it was very nice of Jasmine to have been taking into account the younger fans of the show and wanting to provide them a chance to watch Drag Race girls perform in their cities through an all-ages event. Now, Jasmine's had a couple iconic feuds throughout the years, but one of the ones that sticks out the most is her feud with Nina Bonina Brown. The feud between Nina Bonina Brown and Jasmine Masters began with the season 9 cast announcement. Nina was a fan of Jasmine. She would sometimes dress up as Jasmine to impersonate her on her YouTube and Instagram, all with good intention. Here's Nina impersonating Jasmine pre-drag race. I am Jasmine Masters, and I got something to say. RuPaul's Drag Race has fucked up drag. There, I said it. I said it. I said it. Yeah, I went on the show. But I only went on because I wanted a paycheck. I needed a raise in my paycheck. It's fucked up drag though. Now Jasmine Masters was not too fond of the way Nina played her in those videos, citing that she wasn't capturing the Jasmine Masters persona. Nina would stay fairly quiet for the most part, saying in some of her lives that she's a big fan of Jasmine and that she doesn't think Jasmine understood the videos were done out of respect and admiration. And then the season 9 snatch game rolled around. Bring 
brings you back to Drag Race. I got something to say. I bet you do. <laughs> Jasmine's reaction to Nina's Snatch Game was a mostly positive reaction. However, she did have some minor criticisms. I'm Jasmine Masters and I have something to say. I just want to know, bitch, I have so much material. Just that part. No Tina Shea, Coin Thotters, all the material that could have been used, why wasn't it used? But it is what it is. Um, but yeah. The feud then slowly began to die down, with the conclusion being that Jasmine wasn't a fan of Nina Bonina Brown. Nina had accepted that there would be no friendship between the two. The drama would die off for the next couple years, until May 2019, where Nina responded to some shade Jasmine had thrown online, regarding a recent impersonation that Nina had done of her. In Nina's video, she talks about how she doesn't have anything against Jasmine Masters and doesn't understand why Jasmine doesn't like her. Because after all, Nina's impersonations of Jasmine, according to Nina, are coming from a place of love. Nina then calls out Jasmine by saying that fans at DragCon have said that Jasmine rejected taking pictures with them just because they were wearing Nina Benina Brown merchandise. But what is shady, and from what I've heard, is that You've had fans, and one particular I could think of at DragCon before, they wanted to take a picture of you and they had my shirt on, and you told them you wasn't going to take a picture until they covered the picture up or they took the shirt off. And I oop. Nina then goes on to say that whenever she's been booked at Mickey's, a bar that Jasmine has frequently worked at, she's noticed that Jasmine is never booked with Nina, insinuating that perhaps Jasmine has told promoters to not book Nina on the same days as her. After this, Jasmine never responded to Nina's video and the drama sort of disappeared. Towards the end of 2018, it was announced that Drag Race would be doing a Christmas special, which would feature some very popular Drag Race queens. It would be called the quote, Hollis Slay Spectacular, and in its marketing, it was strongly implied that they would be crowning one of the queens competing. Eight of my girls compete to become my very first Christmas queen. However, once the episode was released, it became apparent very quickly that the episode was just a clever way to advertise RuPaul's new Christmas album. By the end of the episode, it was announced that all eight of the queens had won the Hollis Slate Spectacular. And if we consider this to be canon, then it means Jasmine Masters is officially part of the winner's circle. In regards to the production of the Hollis Slate Spectacular, it was a spectacular mess with many of the queens essentially being tricked into competing on the show. The Christmas special would be filmed in three days. The first day was for the queens to rehearse the choreography for the music video that they would end up performing. However, none of this was filmed since again, the first day was meant explicitly for rehearsals. The second day of filming was to film everything that happens on the main stage, which included the runways, the lip syncs, as well as the music video. With the third and final day of filming being meant for the queen's entrances and everything that happens in the workroom. It was also revealed that production told the queens last minute that they had to learn the lyrics to RuPaul's Christmas album, because they would all have to be lip syncing to it by the end of the episode. This resulted in many of the queens not knowing the words like Jasmine Masters or Kim Chi. Fans also began to spread a rumor online that in Jasmine's lip sync against Shangela, it wasn't actually Jasmine and instead production had gotten a stunt double to fill in for Jasmine due to her no longer being on set. This rumor was later supported by the claims that Jasmine had stormed off set, so the theory began to gain traction. But this was later debunked as Jasmine revealed that it was in fact her. Thanks to the Hollis Slate being filmed backwards, by the time Jasmine left, she had already filmed most of the important important scenes from the episode. While on the set of the Christmas special, Jasmine would end up having a clash with Shangela. According to Jasmine, Shangela was constantly late to set, arriving three hours late to the first two days of filming, which caused her to be many delays in the completion of the episode. Another issue was the negotiations that the queens were doing with producers regarding their pay for the episode. As I mentioned before, production somewhat tricked some of the queens into thinking that the special wouldn't be following the typical drag race format of a competition. However, the queens had already spoken to producers about this on the first day of filming 
talking, yet Shangela would keep insisting on talking to the producers for the days that followed. This was frustrating Jasmine because she just wanted to get the filming of the episode over with. So from her perspective, Shangela arguing with production was only delaying a job that needed to be done anyway. The truth of the matter is that Shangela was simply trying to get a better deal for both herself and the other queens given the circumstances that they were all having to work with. But at the same time, Jasmine just wanted to get the whole thing over with and felt that of all people, Shangela shouldn't be holding up the show even longer by arguing with producers, after she herself had been consistently late to many other things causing even more production to be prolonged. Jasmine would reach her boiling point when on the third day of filming, she'd see Shangela once again holding up production by talking to the producers. Jasmine says that when she asked Shangela to please join the other girls, Shangela responded with an attitude. They would end up talking back and forth with things getting really heated. Eventually, Shangela apologized to both Jasmine and the other queens, which is when Jasmine got in her car and began to drive off which is when two producers from World of Wonder jumped in front of Jasmine's car to try to convince her to stay. But it was to no avail. Jasmine had already made up her mind and was now on her way to go smoke some blunts at home. Shangela would then respond to the situation by going live on Instagram a couple days later. In her response, she discusses how she wishes Jasmine would have handled this personally between them both, instead of avoiding her and then making public statements about the drama of the Christmas special. It's important to note that while this drama was going on, Jasmine was not responding to any of the texts or calls being made by Shangela, which is why Shangela felt justified in going live with her side of the story. Shangela explains that she was late to the first day of filming because she had just arrived from the airport due to being on tour. The second day of filming she was late again, but she says it's because she was tired from being up until midnight the day before rehearsing the choreography that they needed to learn for the music video. And as for day 3, Shangela says that she was not late for that one. Although Shangela does admit that at one point she wanted to talk to the producers separately to negotiate the rates that the queens would be paid for the episode. Which actually resulted in the producers agreeing that all the queens will be compensated for the extra time that they were having to put in to make the show happen. That's when Jasmine Masters came in and began to talk to Shangela about getting back to filming, to which Shangela refused citing that she was in the middle of an important conversation. Jasmine then told production she was going to go get something from her car and ended up driving off the set. After the filming, Shangela did in fact reach out to Jasmine by texting her an apology about what happened on set. She told Jasmine that she didn't mean to be defensive when Jasmine interrupted her conversation with producers. Jasmine then responded 10 days later saying, quote, we can talk tomorrow. The next day, Shangela called Jasmine, but Jasmine never responded. The next time Shangela would see Jasmine would be at Latrice's wedding, where they were both cordial and seemed that they were on good terms. The live concluded, and Shangela saying that while she's not the closest friend of Jasmine's, she still wishes her the best. While filming the Christmas special, Jasmine would also get into some drama with another queen on set. This time, the queen was Eureka. Specifically, Jasmine talks about when they were rehearsing the dance battle between the two groups of queens on the first day of filming. Eureka was apparently taking the choreography a little too seriously, as if they were actually competing on a season of Drag Race, with Eureka constantly doing high kicks and jumping into the splits. Jasmine told Eureka that she should conserve her energy, to which Eureka refused, citing that it was the quote, battle of the big girls between her and Latrice Royale. So I guess Eureka's competitiveness just came into play and she wanted to outdo Latrice. Eventually, as rehearsal went on, Eureka got tired and asked for a break. To which Jasmine said that Eureka should go on a break alone so everyone else can keep practicing. Eureka then responded to this by saying something along the lines of Jasmine not understanding Eureka's struggles because Jasmine is skinny and Eureka is a larger body. But Jasmine then got upset because she felt that Eureka was holding production behind. The argument between Jasmine and Eureka allegedly got so heated to the point where Latrice Royale had to interrupt them and tell Eureka to leave Jasmine alone. Jasmine says that when it came down to it, Shangela hurt her feelings because Jasmine had been friends with Shangela for many years. She also says she's on good terms with Shangela and Eureka now, except that they don't really talk to each other. Although given that this was years ago, I'm sure they're all on better terms now.
When Jasmine Masters was announced in late 2018 as one of the queens that would be competing on All Stars 4, it was a shock to a lot of people. But in a good way. I mean, up until this point, in order to get on All Stars, you had to be a pretty popular queen or at least someone that had made it far on their season. So it was awesome when it was officially announced that Jasmine would be returning to compete on Drag Race. As we know, things didn't go all that well for Jasmine during her time on All Stars 4. Jasmine has said in many interviews that for her All Stars 4 talent show, Jasmine was originally going to do a Patti LaBelle number, which was something production approved and told Jasmine that all they needed to do was for her to choose a Patti LaBelle song so that they could get the licensing rights for it. So Jasmine told them which song she wanted to perform to. By the way, if you didn't know, Jasmine's Patti LaBelle performances are actually pretty entertaining and you can easily find them on YouTube. One of the stunts she used to do would be to roll down a bunch of stairs while doing the climax part of one of Patti LaBelle's songs. So Jasmine was excited to show her Patti LaBelle number to the whole world. However, just four days before the filming began for All Stars 4, production contacted Jasmine and told her that she would not be able to perform to a Patti LaBelle song, and that instead she should go into a music studio and create her own original song that she can perform to. Immediately after that call, Jasmine remembered the exact situation happened to Morgan McMichaels the year before as she was getting ready for All Stars 3. Only production contacted Morgan with even shorter notice, so Morgan had to rush to a studio to create a last minute song to perform in the talent show. A challenge where she would end up placing in the bottom two and being eliminated. Jasmine then assumed that production had similar plans for her. So she decided to not make an original song and to just perform a stand up routine which was also something that production had suggested she do. Needless to say, she'd end up placing in the bottom two along with Farrah Moan. After delivering a stand-up routine that she herself stated had close to no preparation, including no outline, and was just going to wing it while on the stage. A decision that would then completely justify her bottom two placement. The queen that chose to eliminate Jasmine Masters was Trinity the Tuck, who was originally going to hire a costume designer called Jamie Booker. However, Jamie would end up choosing to work on the majority of the runways that Jasmine would end up taking on Drag Race, leaving Trinity to have to look for other designers designers to help make her package for All Stars 4. Jasmine firmly believes that the reason Trinity chose to eliminate her was as payback for taking her designer from her. Moving on, Jasmine would end up being brought back midway through All Stars 4, something that she wasn't aware would be happening. When Jasmine was asked to come back, they offered her a ride from her place to the studio, but Jasmine rejected the offer and instead said she was going to drive herself there. Because she already knew it was going to be a setup and wanted to be able to have an easy way to get out of it if it came down to it something that she would end up later doing in the filming of the Christmas special. It was then revealed that the eliminated queens would be lip syncing against the competing queens to earn a spot in the competition. Jasmine again would have to face off against Trinity and would ultimately sashay away for the second time in the season. Now despite the way that her time went on All Stars 4, Jasmine is happy for the time she got to spend with the other queens and overall enjoying the experience of filming a TV show. When Jasmine's first elimination from All Stars 4 Aired, she seemed to have a lot of resentment towards Trinity, as she took to Twitter to call Trinity a quote, trash mouth and even referred to Mo Hard as an ugly brown cow. Jasmine says that one of the main things she's going to take away from her experience on All Stars 4 is the memories she made with some great friends in the cast of the show. Specifically, she enjoyed when she, along with queens like Manila, Gia, and Latrice, would all smoke weed together in the parking lot of the show's studio. If you watched my Laganja video, you'd remember that back in the earlier seasons, production didn't allow the queens to smoke weed. This was due to the recreational use of marijuana not being legal in California. So production didn't allow Laganja to continue using marijuana, which played a big role into why she was so emotional throughout her time on the show. However, this would then change for future seasons, as once it became legal in California to use marijuana recreationally, production pretty much let loose. By All Stars 3, queens were allowed to smoke weed between filming breaks and be high on set. Aja has admitted that most of the time she was in All Stars 3, she was under the influence of edibles. When Jasmine was asked who she thought was going to win All Stars 4, 
for Jasmine revealed that out of the queens in the top two that's most likely to win the show would be the one that fucked the producer the best. Which presumably refers to Trinity Tuck who has been rumored to have slept with a producer from the show. Apparently the queens even discussed this while on the show but it never made the final edit. Now, while we're on the topic, a producer from World of Wonder hooking up with a contestant from the show may seem like a strange thing to happen, but it's not the first time we've heard a story like this. I mean, in this clip from March 2020, Willem exposes a producer on RuPaul's Drag Race who is known for allegedly hooking up with contestants on the show. Willem discusses, while on season 4, he also hooked up with a producer from the show named Stephen Corfi, a producer who is currently still working for World of Wonder. Pearl is also one of the queens who has allegedly hooked up with one of the producers from the show. I mean, the following clip summarizes everything pretty well. It got old and then the producer that I fucked, his name's Steven Corfi. He's still on the show and he asked me to keep my, his name out of my mouth, but I was like, you didn't keep your dick out of my ass. Why do I need to keep your name out of my mouth? <laughs> you never tried to be my friend. You try to fuck contestants every season. Not every season, but for at least two or three of them because mm -hmm. I saw the text to Pearl, bitch. In that same interview from the podcast, The Black T, Willem has asked if he essentially regrets the way he handled his relationship with World of Wonder. Do you have a lot of times you're like, fuck, I should not have done that? Or most of the time you're like, you know what, it ended up being yeah. good. A lot, a lot of the, every day I'm faced with something where I was like, I should have just shut up and played the game. Every time, every time I see uh, a Rue girl on something that World of Wonder hooks them up with, or a carpet, or, an, or a yeah. VMA, or a Viacom gig, one of those, it's um, it's one of those things where I was like, you know what, I'm, I made my battle, I chose. Now, I'm not sure how the whole TV industry works, but what do you guys think regarding producers from the show allegedly sleeping with contestants who are competing on the season? Anyways, back to the video. Another funny thing about Jasmine is that she brought a suitcase full of food to both Season 7 and All Stars 4 because she had heard that the food production provides to the queens suck, so she decided to have her own supply. Now in early 2019, Jasmine would end up going viral with the And I Oop meme, which somehow exploded into mainstream pop culture, despite the original video dating back to 2015. By the end of the year, Jasmine was awarded the quote, GIF of the year, which meant that the clip of her saying And I Oop was the most used GIF of 2019, sitting at 419 million views. Jasmine is also alluded to have copyrighted the And I Oop meme. So if that's true, I hope she got some coins from when the meme went viral. The End I Oop meme would essentially cement Jasmine as the meme queen of the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise. Nowadays, Jasmine doesn't really want anything to do with the show. She sort of just keeps to herself and is usually on a live video every couple days, smoking the blunt and just talking to the people who attend her lives. We can't forget the amount of times that Jasmine had us laughing at her screams from something that she said on either Drag Race or on her YouTube channel. And who knows, with the way the Drag Race seasons keep being made, Jasmine may soon be the winner of an all-star season. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to interact with me on Twitter, you can find me at GreenGay22. I'll see you guys next time.